Oh shit, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Square of the Circle music channel. It's your old pal Mage again, that's right, it's me. So, uh, you're here. We're here. Let's talk about music appreciation, shall we? And uh, also, an emphasis on record collecting. Final records, that is. Um, so glad to have you back. It's been a few days since I posted, and uh, we're just going to do more of the same tonight. I hope that's all right. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Getting back into the work week. Oh, kind of a slow start. No problem, though, because uh, I'm here to put a little bit of pep in your step, a little bit of excitement in your life. That's what I do, right? Uh, so you got to excite me. You got to excite my life. You got to go over to Instagram and you got to follow me and say what's up. Like all my shit. That's what it's all about. And uh, make sure you scroll down in my video history over the last year and all of the... Uh, titillating content that I have been uh, really throwing at you guys. It's pretty fucking fun, and I enjoy it now. It's kind of really what I do for fun. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll join a band here again pretty soon. Who knows? And then you guys won't see me much anymore, but uh, you'd miss me. Um, so yeah, like, you know, give me, give me a like and give me some subscribes and all that stuff. Um, here it is, nearly the 1st of April, Fooly Foolia. Um, don't forget that I started a contest about three or four weeks ago, uh, early on in March, and I wanted to try to get up to 500 subs, and I'm getting pretty, you know, I'm not close, but I'm getting a lot of subscribers, and it's a lot of fun. So go check out my contest, enter into my contest, uh, go to the video, follow the instructions, and uh, maybe you'll win a cool prize. All right, video always begins with a uh, brief spiel. So now that that horseshit is done, uh, let's get into talking about music. Um, here we are again, and I'm going to do another episode. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of start out the week uh, with this every week, because um, that's what I do on my days off. I am a Tuesday through Saturday guy, so I get Sunday, Monday off. But one of my very favorite things to do on a Monday when everyone else is uh, hating their first day of work, um, I'm roaming the streets of Eugene and Springfield and beyond. This valley is a grand place, and you can go from the north end of the valley to the south end of the valley pretty quickly. It's really only a span of about, well, what we call the central to southern Willamette Valley. Some idiots will say that the Willamette Valley goes outside of even Salem and upwards of Portland, and they say that that's still technically considered part of the Willamette Valley. I disagree. All of us locals, we can have lots of discussions and chit-chats about that another time. We're going to talk about music, and what I do on Mondays is I go all over this fucking southern Willamette Valley here in Oregon, and I go all to the, uh, the honey pots and treasure troves and all of those wonderful thrift stores, secondhand store, junk store, whatever the hell you want to call them. I go to all of them, and I see if I can find anything. A lot of times I can't. Um, because let's be honest, the shit's real picked over. It's really popular right now. And all these hipster douchebags are out there taking all of our great shit. And, uh, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So I'll get to, uh, the music here and stop gabbing at you so hard. Um, but this is all my thrift store finds. So here we are again with Tales from the Thrift, starring yours truly, me, Aaron Major. So let's go right into it here. Um, pretty good pile of cool shit that I found at the junk stores this time, guys, this week, uh, was fruitful. Um, here's my CDs. Uh, haven't had this one since high school, so really stoked to find this for a buck so I can give it some love again and really get into it. Um, Smashing Pumpkins first, their debut album. Let's see if I can fight the glare here. Um, yeah, remember Smashing Pumpkins debut album, Gish? Fucking dope. 91, I think. Whatever. Um, brought to you by the uh, legendary Butch Vig. Put his uh, lickety split all over this fucking album. It sounds awesome. You know, Billy Corgan's first uh, tiptoeing into the rock industry and giving us uh, his take on uh, what can be done with a guitar and many other things. One of my favorite drummers from the 90s, Jimmy Chamberlain, uh, playing some rock and shit all over this. We all know the crew you know, of the band. Uh, James Eha was in this, uh, on this album, I think, too, wasn't he? 
Uh, but yeah, whatever. That song Rhinoceros is dope. Yeah, this is going to give me some some fun hours again. I haven't heard this album for a really long time, so I was stoked to find a copy of Smashing Pumpkins' first album, Gish. Uh, also, some more <laughs> some more high school vibes, middle school and high school vibes. Uh, I found a great copy of uh, Jane's Addiction. What's it called? Nothing's Shocking. That's right. Nothing's Shocking with this uh, legendary cover art. Everyone remembers this. It's got the fucking parental advisory sticker on it, the old school one, the old style. Uh, advisory sticker on it still kind of cool it's in great shape i'll get a little bit of love out of this too miss those days the 90s this band was pretty cool uh a homie of mine shout out kenley schoonover love you buddy um you introduced me to these guys uh at first i thought they were pretty bizarre um but that really that fun end of the bizarro kind of like just new it was just new every time something's new and it it catches your ear. You're like, what? This is odd. What are these guys doing? I kind of felt that way about these guys in 2003 and 2004. But Kenley introduced me to TV on the radio. And we used to <laughs> we used to play this in his car. He would take me golfing, uh, which was honestly for dudes like us, especially here in, you know, <laughs> Willamette Valley, Oregon. Uh, not many months of the year that golf can truly be enjoyed. Um, Lots of rain, lots of soggy grass, lots of whiskey drinking and beer drinking. <laughs> we used to go smack the balls around. And, uh, I remember him always putting this on, TV on the radio. Pretty fucking cool. Um, and, like, I'm not really, I'm not very familiar with a lot of this. Uh, the album's called Desperate Youth, Blood Thirsty Babes. Cool name for an album. Cool art. Again, sorry for all the glares. Still getting used to this shit. CDs are rough. Um... But yeah, cool fucking band. I uh, can't wait to get a little bit more familiarized with them. Even though I think they're kind of a thing of old. I don't. I haven't really heard anything of them uh, in the last 15 years or more. So who knows what they've been doing. Maybe they'll come out with some new music here. Uh, here's one. I. It's kind of a weird rarity. I mean, not a rarity, but just kind of a more unknown group that I stumbled across. Um on like the internet i remember this song the song is called the original blue air and then i found the cd and i was like fucking cool it's really interesting interesting like kind of uh math rock kind of interesting like indie rock what people call indie rock alt rock whatever um some jazz elements yeah just really kind of cool mathy uh jazz rock in a sense there, i mean there's other elements to it too it's hard to really put your uh, finger on finger on it but yeah called the slip or no they're called eisenhower sorry i think the band no fuck me i can't remember the name of the band <laughs> or the album is the band the slip and the album's called eisenhower fuck me i don't know the way they write it on the cover and the way they write that you know, on the spine it's it's kind of hard to i don't know i just remember this song popped up like on one of my playlists the original blue air it's fucking dope check it out guys some great drumming some great guitar playing all kinds of interesting cool uh, effects and synthesizers and stuff yeah i think they're just called the slip aren't they i don't know interesting band 2005 so yeah really awesome find for a buckaroo stoked about that last on the cds that i found recently um one that I also i've never seen this either and i'm not gonna you know pretend to be like a giant fucking uh fan of David Byrne and Talking Heads and whatnot. I know a little bit about him. I think he's pretty fucking cool. And I like that kind of eccentric avant stuff he was giving us all throughout the 80s and 90s. But this is a solo album by him, I guess. I can't, the pronunciation again will evade me, but uh, maybe Ray Momo, something like that. R-E-I-M-O-M-O. -O -O. Uh, I've already listened to a little bit of this pretty fucking, pretty cray cray. <laughs> Very David Byrne. <laughs> fucking cool though. So, yeah, interesting find. Can't wait to get more familiarized with this. Because um, I do respect everything he's done throughout the decades. So, yeah, David Byrne CD, pretty cool. Ray Momo, I think that's how to say the album. I don't know when that was put out. Maybe early 2000s? Sorry, late 80s. <laughs> so I guess right around the time of... Um, the really famous uh, 
you know, works of, uh, when did they do the, what's that onstage performance that Talking Heads did? It's a movie, it's, uh, Start Making Sense. Um, yeah, anyway, it was right around that time, wasn't it? Stop making sense. Oh, whatever. Pardon me while I wet my whistle. Got some cool tapes, guys. Got some cool cassette tapes. Excited about these rattlers. Uh, came across a little chunk of, like, some Frank Sinatra tapes that I'm pretty stoked about. So, um, you know, not a huge jazz lover of uh, that type of kind of, like, you know, crooner. Uh, classic jazz, vocal jazz, um, but everyone loves and respects old Blue Eyes, right? Nothing wrong with uh, enjoying a little bit of Blue Eyes for fucking 20 cents. These, co you know, they're just collections of their greatest hits. One on Capitol Records and one more just kind of like a cheapo, cheesy bargain bin, you know, whatever. It's neat to come across some Frank Sinatra tapes sometime. So I was excited about that. Oh, fuck yeah, you know, I love Heart, this album. Butterfly, what's it called? Uh, Dog and Butterfly, that's right. So, you can always get down on some heart. Love them sisters, everything they do. Singing. This one's fucking cool. I remember Terry Bozio drums on this album, and I remember being really intrigued by this album because I've heard snippets of it. It was all over the radio when I was a kid. Um, I just don't, I can never put my thumb on like one specific song and be like oh yeah that's a song by missing persons um you know really cool legendary kind of uh cover art this was kind of everywhere when i was growing up all over you know 1982 or whatever maybe 1984 this album was put out but yeah or 82 yeah i just i just remember listening to it uh emphatically because i was you know captivated by terry bozio's drumming uh, a lot of what he did was Pretty fucking fascinating. Pretty interesting, cool drummer. So I'm excited to get a lot of play out of that. And this one was really fucking great to come across. I've had this copies of this, like in every format, you know, ever since I was 11 years old. <laughs> it's like, but I have never had this on cassette, so I had to get it. And it's a fucking, you know, seminal, awesome album. Everyone loves Appetite for Destruction. So, yeah. Gotta have some Guns N' Roses in your life. Especially this one. I mean, honestly, when it comes to uh, Guns N' Roses, this is the only thing I'll ever listen to. <laughs> and I, honestly, I'll only listen to it, you know, two or three times, and then I'll, you know, sell it at a record show or something. Because that's what I do, and all you haters can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> I do what I want. I collect what I need and what I will definitely spin a lot, all the time. I got really weary of having this inundating collection that would gather dust and that shit fucking pisses me off when music just sits there and gathers dust i have enough books that do that <laughs> i don't need i don't need 500 more records in my house that just sit there and don't get me play time so that's my methodology um i know a lot of you collectors and appreciators uh think i'm a dipshit but whatever that's my philosophy i'm an active listener so I never have any more than my count right now is like 400. I'll, I'll never let it go much higher. So, you know, I have this like, you know, 200, you know, roughly 200, maybe more like 150 that you see behind you and another shelf down below me, a few in the back, but that's it. That's all I need. These junk store finds are fun though. I'll end up keeping a lot of these around for a long time. This one reminds me of my mother. So here's my vinyl. Here's my, my vinyl finds, everybody. I know that's what you really came here for. Uh, a couple cool soundtracks that I found right off the bat. Um, this one, like I said, reminds me of my mother. 70s kind of stuff. It's got, you know, Ambrosia on it. I love Ambrosia. Um, Christopher Cross, I'm, you know, mildly familiar with a little bit that he's done. I just remember this this movie was on in the house when I was growing up a lot. My mom loved this movie. She loved Dudley Moore. She absolutely adored Liza Minnelli, of course. But uh, this movie's really fantastic. It's really, you know, it's tough to watch in a lot of spots just because it can be kind of... Um, it's just hard for people who, anyone who's battled with addiction, and especially alcoholism, you know, this can be kind of a tough watch, a little bit of a trigger warning, everybody, uh, but it's comical, it's wonderful, Dudley Moore's great, the music's charming, um, isn't there also, like, um, isn't there a fucking, like, Rod Stewart song on here, too, 
but I don't know. I'm excited to kind of give it a little bit of a reminiscent spin and, and walk through again. So, and it's clean as a whistle. So I love it when that happens. Cool soundtrack and another one, another great soundtrack from my child. I remember this movie, uh, Teen Wolf 2, with Jason Bateman. Look at Jason Bateman. Look at how cute and young he was. And he's just, he's turned into one of my very, very favorite actors. Uh, if anyone's not familiar with the series that he does now on Netflix called Ozarks, watch Ozarks. It's fucking magnificent. But really great, you know, comedy career, really just amazing actor. And this was him as a kid in that Teen Wolf movie. The music's just a bunch of, you know, it's a bunch of pap, a bunch of sappy, pappy crap, but whatever. It's mostly just kind of like, there's a couple golden oldies and there's a couple modern day 80s tunes and nothing really of note, but... No, oh, Oingo Boingo's on here. That's fucking ironic. That's cool. Um, but yeah, oh, there is. There's a couple Oingo Boingo songs. Uh, and yeah, like I said, some other kind of cl more classic kind of stuff, rock and roll tunes. But yeah, fun. Fun record. Can't wait to get it. get a few spins out of that. Here's an interesting chunk I found. You know how inevitably when you're going through the bins, you're always going to find like these kind of weird random chunks of like, like a somebody who's Greek, you know, like a whole like big fat chunk of like a bunch of Greek records and a bunch of like, you know, Eastern European chunk and a big chunk of, uh, you know, just niche shit like polka. You'll find like a huge chunk of like 25 polka records and you're just like, God damn it, plowing through all this stuff. Well, I found a really, really interesting little chunk here and I just decided to get the whole lot of it because... I want to dive right into it, and it's all pristine. It's all on a weird label I've never heard of, and this is stuff out of, like, the east coast of Canada. So, um, I don't know. I don't know anything about Newfoundland. And so, um, these are a bunch of selections from uh, some uh, Newfoundland uh, record label. Uh, what are they called? Oh, fuck me. Now I can't find it. Um, a Pigeon Inlet. A Pigeon Inlet Records productions i don't know <laughs> but here's a bunch of they're just kind of like local local newfoundland artists it's like folk and uh i don't know it's just interesting i haven't really listened to much of it yet but like i said it's going to be kind of like you know folk of the region this dude i guess is a, a monster fiddler fiddler and uh, emile benoit is that his name yeah emile benoit it's going to be cool and interesting uh jim payne and kelly russell i don't know more kind of, probably just kind of folk stuff. I did, I listened to this a little bit. Uh, wonderful Grand Band, is that what they're called? The Wonderful Grand Band. That is the most Canadian name I have ever heard. Uh, but they're pretty rad. I listened to a little a little bit of this. It's just great, you know, charming. It's kind of real soft rock folk, soft rock folk music from Newfoundland up in Canada. So, uh yeah, kind of fun to come across this kind of really intriguing shit that I don't know anything about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to that a little bit this week. <laughs> uh, here's some more classics. So some interesting shit too that I I don't know a whole lot about. Of course, I know about Leon Russell, but I've never really listened. You know, not really my time and place and era. And um, I guess you had to be there, kind of thing. Yeah, that's kind of. Kind of got a theme to it that kind of like, you know, and I kind of, I'm going to roll with that this week. But um, I don't know. There's so many of these artists. It's just like, okay, you kind of had to be there. So uh, shout out to uh, subscriber and watcher Molly Whipple. Thanks for the great uh, inspirato there. I'm going to, I'm going to roll with that this week and just talk about a bunch of artists that it's just kind of like, I need to give it a shot, I guess. Um, I'm supposed to like it guess he had to be there kind of thing he's one of those artists i'm really gonna give him i'm gonna give him a try i'm gonna try really hard i'm gonna listen to a bunch of leon russell so rolling with that this week uh no dude like 70s stuff never heard of i don't know i kind of like their cover art and uh i don't know looks interesting michael franks never heard of michael franks never heard of this album sleeping gypsy but i like the really kind of cool Cover art. He looks like a bit of a doofus. <laughs> Sporting his Warner Brothers shirt. Whatever. I'll give it a try. Most of everything that was coming out of this period in the 70s is kind of good. So Here's some stuff that I know and I love and I knew I would love and I 
want it all the time. I love the Everly Brothers. Best of, another great collection by them. Tons of great hits, and ironically, well, by happenstance, it's kind of a good thing because another um, album that I featured by them that I love is a collection of a lot of their greatest hits. This one has all of the ones that aren't on that other album that I've talked about before. Um, but yeah, it's got a, you know, Wake Up Little Susie, and it's got Bye Bye Love, and uh, Kathy's Clown, all of their biggest, biggest motherfucking hits. But yeah, so I love the shit out of these guys. Excited to get this one. So I'm going to be spinning this a bunch this week. Sound of the Everly Brothers. Pretty cool. Another classic, you know, country artist and that kind of like same vein as the other Everly Brothers kind of started out as being more of kind of a country artist, kind of like migrated into being kind of more of a country rock artist. And then he just kind of went full fledged, like hippie, hippie cowboy kind of thing. I love Chris. Chris Christopherson, and this is his, you know, me and Bobby McGee album, you know, famous for writing that song that, you know, what's her butt, who's that trashy gal, uh, what was her name, anyway, <laughs> she covered that song and made it, you know, mega famous, but, you know, that was Chris Christopherson's song, and I like his version so much better, um, so yeah, stoked to find a really great copy of this, it's in fucking fantastic shape, love when that happens, Music, you know, Ironically, too, because the uh, <laughs> cover is so whew, seen some days, but someone took care of their vinyl because it's uh, tip top. Pretty cool. Love me some Chris Christopherson. Again, some more folk Americana country stylings. Another fantastic uh, double LP I picked up a tribute album to Woody Guthrie. Cool. With. Um, covers by a bunch of really great folk artists uh folk artists of course you know joan joan baez country joan mcdonald uh even woody guthrie himself uh sings some selections on this and uh the very famous odetta blues you know soul uh singer and it's a yeah double lp tons of fucking music really cool photos on the inside there he is the man guthrie himself there's the arlo right isn't that arlo right there Pretty sure this, the little guy, is Arlo. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. Love the shit out of that. Another classic movie soundtrack. One of the better movie soundtracks out there. The soundtrack to Easy Rider. Fucking love this art. Iconic, classic art. Fucking Robert Redford. No, sorry, Peter Fonda. Um, he looks like Robert Redford right there. <laughs> but yeah. Love this classic film. It's in great fucking shape. Usually, this is one that, like, you find all the time. Uh, but it's always hammered. It's always, I mean, the vinyl is always just fucking completely thrashed. Um, and I found a really great copy. Nice and clean, even the outer jacket. Yeah. American classic. Classic film, classic music. I mean, Jimi Hendrix and The Birds, Steppenwolf, Electric Prunes. All kinds of really fantastic hard rock from the 60s. Pretty cool. Always happy if I come across that quite a bit, but like I said, that one's pretty clean, pretty neat to find. Here's one I don't, I've never seen. Crying Shames, again in that vein, I think, you know, probably mid to late 60s psychedelic hard rock, maybe, maybe more kind of just like, uh, you know, more kind of uh, tame psych, psych pop rock. But um, yeah, the Crying Shames, don't know anything about them. Can't wait to kind of dig into this a little bit. I can get into this, this kind of stuff. Album's called A Scratch in the Sky. Cool artwork on the back. Yeah. Sorry, I know all you old timers again are throwing prunes at me. <laughs> you never listen to the grand shame. What the fuck is wrong with you, young snapper? Yeah. I'll get into it. Uh, another one that reminds me of Mom. I've I've listened to this a bunch and I've had copies of it and I always kind of it's like one I give away to, you know. Uh, people I know and, you know, women, the, you know, my sister, my mom, whatever. Al Stewart's Year of the Cat album. Huge smash out of the 70s. Everyone loves the hell out of this album, so I'll give it a try. Again, I think I've, I've tried it once before. I'd put it on for my mom, and she, you know, just loved it because it just reminded her of high school, you know. That's 
Sometimes we just love the music because it just reminds us of a period in history that we adored and that we cherish. And it's not always the music. <laughs> it's probably, you know, a lot of this stuff really isn't fantastic music, <laughs> but it just, it's got its nostalgia. And this is what, this has always just reminded me of that and just kind of like, it's a nostalgia piece. <laughs> yeah, you can respect that stuff. Uh, in the same time period, same kind of vein, you know, can't can't turn away a copy of the birds, Mr. Tambourine Man. You know, you see this in the in the bins, you just you gotta take it. I've had it before, listened to it a bunch. This is a pretty damn good copy, and it's on some really sturdy good wax, the Columbia label, the mono, mono pressing. Kind of neat. Yeah, and it's really in great shape. I love seeing hits classics like this on nice sturdy wax. It's an early pressing, so it's not just flimsy, you know, dime store crap that you're getting. It's one of the classic original, original pressings. Pretty neat. Um, again, same era, same sound, same kind of everything. Uh, yeah, I love Jefferson Airplanes. So this was their second album, right? Bless its pointed little head. <laughs> it's a really great album name, album cover. <laughs> like, they they have some great hits on here. This is the one with Somebody to Love, a uh, famous track. Um, yeah, a bunch of other fantastic tracks. Um, yeah, iconic band of, you know, 60s psychedelia. Cool album, and it's in magnificent shape. Again, one I come across quite often, but is never... Uh, found in this great shape and with the spine is fully intact there's no tears along the spine usually this is the type because it's that real soft cardboard almost like it's kind of like a threaded kind of mesh uh, material cardboard that they made in with some albums you know kind of that cool quality feel to it texture you know textured and usually especially in this type it's like the spine is usually just completely just shredded like a fucking cat just <laughs> you know, danced on it. But there's no marks on it whatsoever. It's in fantastic shape. So, pretty excited about that. Love Jefferson Airplane. Okay. Getting down to the last little bit here. I've talked about this before. A lot of people, it angers a lot of people when I talk about the stuff that I'm just really not a huge super fan of. And this one guy was really nice about it because he was... You could tell. You know how you can tell when you insult people's sensibility and taste in music? They they really want to let you know, but they also want to be civil with you. Most people are always uh, overwhelmingly kind and civil on my channel, and I appreciate that. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Haven't seen many trolls yet. I'm still young. <laughs> I'm still young here on the tubes, but very minimal uh, trolling going on, which is rad. Uh, which kind of, you know, alludes to the fact that you could say that, like, you know, it's obvious I'm not out here to just insult people and just, you know, <laughs> troll you guys. So I always like to keep things with an air of just kind of like, it's almost like it's a discussion. Even though I'm the only one talking, I still want to keep it kind of like open air. I don't want to be too condescending and too shitty about my opinions, even though I do get pretty... Uh, opinionated <laughs> here on the old Square to Circle music channel. Anyway, here I get to yammering. I had a conversation, not even really a conversation, just a series of comments by a real nice guy who was really kind of walking me through like, hey man, this band has a really great career that you're really discounting and you're not mentioning. I get that. I was really kind of like honed in on talking shit about rumors by Fleetwood Mac. And he, this guy was emphatic about it. You know, you've really got to give their earlier career a try so I'm going to here I go I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do my best to enjoy me some uh Fleeb what is it again Fleeb Macwood ah, I always forget the name of this band something like that anyway I want to give them my best shot this album I think maybe I've even put it on before and gave it a shot but I'm, I'm really gonna sit down with an attentive ear now it's called they then play on then Play On by Fleetwood Mac. I think it was like 1970, right? Um, anyway, yeah, I'll give it a shot. It's in great shape. It's really cool to kind of open up. And this is, I like this art. I really, I really do. I like this art a lot. 
all of the uh, really cool intricate patterns and stuff on this. And it's really beautiful packaging. Great shape. So I'll give it a try. Okay. You guys have been great. Thanks for hanging out with me again tonight. Welcome back to the, the week in the channel here on the Square the Music Circle channel. Whatever the fuck it's called. I don't even remember the name of my own channel. But um, last little bit. I saved this for last because it's like, this is one of the fucking cooler gems I've ever found in my junk store days. Uh, this fucking thing's actually worth, worth some money. It's kind of neat. So I was... Uh, Really excited. And it even has the original hype sticker on it and everything. So I found this really fucking awesome, like one of the last to like middle career last of Oingo Boingo albums, just titled Boingo, isn't it? Or no, no, they just, they just, uh, uh, put the album out with just the name Boingo. But the album's called Dark at the End of the Tunnel, 1990. So I think this was really when, uh, kind of the end of what Oingo Boingo was really putting, when they were really putting all their energy and emphasis and time into the band. I think Danny Elfman really was like, okay, I really want to go focus on my, <laughs> this film career, for this, you know, this kind of thing I'm doing and composing for films is really kind of taken off. You know, this was like right after like Beetlejuice had, had, had just hit really hard. And I'm sure a few other things, you know, Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure and like a couple of other films had really hit hard in the box office and other places. And so he was really getting some notoriety. So I think, yeah, this was kind of the end of the, the real serious Oingo Boingo rock, rock and roll days and uh, branching off into Danny Elfman, really kind of becoming more of a, focusing on his composer career as a film score composer. So, but yeah, this fucking album is, I think it's pretty rare, especially a find in the wild. I know it's rare. I've, I looked it up. It's people pay, a lot of money for this album so <laughs> when it comes to the whole like junk store you know finding stuff and flipping it which I, I do like to do I'm one of those collectors sorry again to you know piss off all you purists but I'm not a fucking purist if I find something for five dollars that I know I can sell for 60 <laughs> like, I'm gonna buy it I'm gonna listen to this I think Olingo Boy knows the shit I especially think Danny Elfman Danny Elfman's one of my favorite uh, modern contemporary film composers. And I even really like a lot of his pop career, even beyond what he did in Oingo Boingo. Some of that new solo shit, his newest album from like, it was just last year, wasn't it? Um, that shit's fucking psycho. It's so fucking cool. It's really great. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna love the shit out of this for a while. I may just hold on to it for a long time. It's got the original hype sticker and fucking cool, man. Really great art. Yeah. So what a score. Yeah, one of the better, <laughs> one of the greatest scores I've ever had at a junk store at St. Vincent de Paul. <laughs> Pretty sweet. All right, everybody. Well, that's the end of uh, all of my junk that I found this last weekend, my weekend. Um, yeah. So uh, can't wait to talk to you guys some more this week after I post a few more videos and um yeah, go down and look for my contest. Join into my contest. Get, help get me to the 500 subscriber mark. Um, what else did I want to say while I had you guys here? That's about it. Go fuck yourself. Um, I love you. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for enduring all this, guys. And uh, peace be with you. See you next time. Probably tomorrow.